Merry Christmas, everybody. You're watching Blue Dog Aquatics. I hope joy and happiness is reaching you on this Christmas day. Uh, I hope you're with your friends, loved ones, and family members enjoying this great holiday and enjoying everything that you have. I want to take a second uh, to say thank you to the soldiers and the men and women in uniform who are keeping us safe this uh, holiday season. Uh, so thank you for that. And uh, without further ado, let's get into it. Today, I keep getting questions, you know, because we're moving everything from the house where everything's been as far as animals to the storefront. And everybody's like, well, when it's cold, I mean, like today, it's not so cold. I mean, it, it's 60 degrees outside and I can't believe that we're at Christmas and it's 60. But hey, I will not complain because I will enjoy that warm weather. But everybody asks, well, how do you keep the animals safe when it is cold? When you're transporting them back and forth, well, we got a simple solution for that, and we're gonna walk you through it. So, and we're gonna kind of walk you through how we make these things too. So, what we're gonna talk about is how to make a transport box for a chameleon. So, let's get into it. As you guys can see, uh, we've been getting some orders in. Uh, this, believe it or not, this is actually all substrate. That's all it is. Uh, some of my wholesalers didn't have it in stock and I needed it quick, so here it is. So I want to give a big shout out and a thank you to them. Um, they made it happen so that we can get these animals situated. Now, what we have up here is a chameleon transport box. And you can see up here that it's really nice. This one actually has... Oh, this one's got latches, which is very important when you're transporting an animal that can climb. You know, if you're dealing with chameleons or snakes, you always want a transport that has a nice clip and a nice seal around it. That way you don't have the animal trying to get out, which you know they're, they're gonna do. Another important thing to think about when it comes to chameleons is you don't want that chameleon sitting on the bottom. Snakes, they don't care, you know, some lizards, but with chameleons, we want to keep them propped up and safe. And so what I actually do is I actually take a treated piece of a stick, and the way I do that is I actually take this wood. Um, you can get it from outside or from the shoreline, but the, the big thing with treated wood is, which, I mean, you can see this is just a branch, but you want to make sure that there's no bacteria or no parasites or anything like that on it. So what we do is we bleach it in the bathtub for four hours. It's a good way to get your bathtub clean. Then what we do is we rinse down and we actually soak it for a couple of days in straight RO water. And then we'll do it again in new RO water uh, with uh, some remineralizer in there. And uh, it'll come out white and it'll come out clean and that's what you want bacteria and parasite free now as you can see this stick goes all the way through and that's so that the chameleon can sit on the branch you can see it in there it goes straight across the middle and that's so the chameleon can sit up on there and balance himself perfectly also you can see all these little drill holes now those i'm sure as most of you have guessed already those are breathing holes now something to be very mindful of is that when you're drilling these depending on the type of container that you're doing might shatter i mean we, we've gotten some tupperware in that just shattered the second we put a drill bit through it and the biggest thing with these that I've kind of gathered and drop a comment down below if you have any other suggestions is to make sure that the drill bit is going fast. And what we actually do is we actually tape, uh, we use duct tape across the back and that way when we drill through, it doesn't hold or it, it doesn't splinter out. Now, let's see if we can zoom in. There's one right here and I know it's kind of hard to see but there is a little hairline crack. That's all right because they're not spending their entire lives in this enclosure. This is literally to get them from point A to point B. And as you can see, we have drill holes all the way around. Now we don't have any, oh, I take that back. We do have a couple in this one. Most of the boxes I do, I don't do vent holes in the top 
And that's only because sometimes I stack them and if you only have vent holes on the top, then you're not going to, your animal's not gonna be able to breathe. But this one obviously is, this is, uh, I believe this is hot rods in uh, transport. But as you can see, when we were drilling the top, this, these were the probably the first ones and it cracked there. Like I said, not a huge issue as long as it doesn't blow out the side of the enclosure or the, the inside of the transport, um, you'll be good. Now, as far as what to put in it when you're transporting it, well, we put paper towels in the bottom. Um, just, it's easier and clean, easier to clean up. Um, that way if they do defecate or anything like that during transit, um, or if they, for whatever reason, want to sit on the bottom, they're not sitting directly on the plastic. They can sit on the, a nice cozy piece of paper towel. Um, and then uh, also with that, now I don't put any heaters directly in with the uh, animals during transit. Shrimp and fish are a different story because they're in bags, so they have something to protect them from the heater. But with chameleons and lizards and monitors and all that, when you have a transport like this, you don't have a uh, an insul or a barrier between the animal and the heater. So what we do is actually we take just your normal everyday bath towel and we'll actually wrap up uh, about three quarters of the transport and that way it keeps it well insulated. And then we also keep the truck at a booming 72 degrees all the, the whole time. Pretty much we'll actually start the truck about uh 30 minutes before we i mean it also depends on how cold it is out uh but typically we do about 30 minutes before that way the truck has plenty of time to warm up and that way when the animals come from inside they go directly in there and uh they're good to go and then they go from the transport into the shop and then they go into their enclosure so stay tuned for that we're actually going to be doing a lot of videos on uh, the transportation of like monitors and the chameleons um we're uh, still working on building a couple of chameleon enclosures so that'll be exciting as you guys can hear bub is going nuts outside because uh he's like what's going on inside why do i hear talking and why can i not be a part of this <laughs> but also guys uh when you're transporting animals uh don't be surprised if it stresses them out you know it's you're taking them from an environment that they're comfortable with and that they know, okay, this is where I get fed. This is uh, where I can go to hide. But then you're taking them from that environment and putting them in just an empty tote where they have nowhere to hide. If you do have a skittish animal, you could put a hide or something, a small hide in there where they can get away. Um, but also with that, don't be surprised if your animal, when you get it to the new location, doesn't eat for a while. Um, chameleons, I mean, Normally when I transport chameleons for shows, uh, they go on a kick for like three or four days where they won't eat and then they get back into the cycle. Snakes are a couple of weeks. Um, and it, it, just, it really depends on the animal. Just my biggest suggestion for that if you're transporting an animal is to uh, offer them the food. If they don't take it, okay, put it back. Um, if they do take it, great, awesome. Then we're back on track. Um, the health and safety of these animals is the biggest priority for us, especially when we're transporting so many uh, to the store. That And I can't wait for you guys to see it. We are still on track for January 15th of the grand opening. Uh, pretty much once we get into the new year, 2022, uh, we will for sure announce the uh, grand opening and make sure that you guys save the date and everything. Uh, it's gonna be a great spectacle and it'll be a lot going on with a lot of guests coming in. So I am uh, so excited to have this dream finally come true. And it's been a lot of work, but hey, you know, hard work is what leads to your dreams coming true. And that is the very surefire case when it comes to this. But that's it for today, guys. Hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure to like and subscribe if you're enjoying this. And, uh, Merry Christmas, everyone. Thanks for watching, and as always, the big question, your tank or mine?